forever. Dog. Hey, this is Gabe Gonzalez, and I host the brand new podcast, Queerty. And this is Alex Berg, and I host the brand new podcast, LGBTQ Nation. Two brand new podcasts made lovingly just for you. On Thursdays, I sit down with the best LGBTQ journalists, activists, and politicians to discuss the most pressing topics in the community. And on Fridays, I end each messy week right by sitting down with the funniest, smartest, and sexiest people in the world to talk pop culture, entertainment, news, and more. LGBTQ Nation and Queerty, politics and pop culture. On Thursdays, you cry. On Fridays, you laugh. No, no, it's not all sad. We have some good news on Thursdays. Okay, like, what am I talking about? These days, you can cry every day of the week. Listen to both shows and get to know everything you need to know. You're already holding your phone, so subscribe to Queerty and LGBTQ Nation today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Only Only on on Forever Forever Talk. Talk. Hello. Hello. Um, hello, and welcome back to Race, Race Chaser, Chaser. Ah. a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single last damn episode of RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race, Race, starting from the very beginning. This uh, is the beginning. My name's Alaska. What's yours? Hello, I'm Willem. Well, hello. Hello. Uh, Queer how, nominee. How's it feel to be a third time Queer Tea Award nominee? Uh, honey, you know. It, Has it, it set in yet? It feels right. Honestly. It feels right. You know, it feels correct, I, yeah. The day the nominations were announced, my publicist called me at five in the morning. This is mm-hmm. how it works. They called me at five in the morning. They woke me up and they said, honey, are you sitting down? Uh, and yes, we are nominated for a Queer Tea Award for Best Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can vote every single day until February 16th at queertea.com slash queerteas2021. You There's know, I so was... M- Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was just going to talk about all the luminaries and legends nominated. There's so, so, so many. many. I was just clicking so through many. and voting for people that I knew. I'm like, oh, I'm going to vote for her there. I'm going to vote for him. So We're funny. in really good company, um, and I hope that there isn't someone at Queer Tea like looking at the IP addresses of who is voting because they're just gonna see that I vote. I vote pretty much every day for our <laughs> podcast, and they're just gonna be like, "Wow, that Alaska, she's <laughs> she really, um, she really wants to, the, to win this." But you know what? I whoever you vote for, as long uh, as it's us. As long as it's and us. and Isis King for Trailblazer because I like her too. That's T. We love yeah. the Queer T Awards and um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, an honor to be nominated with such amazing divas in the podcasting podcastress category. Podcastressing. Um, last week the girls were challenged mm. to do baby mini drag challenge mm-hmm. and they were given their first design challenge with the bag ball on the main stage. Mm-hmm. There were thirty six different looks on the runway, possibly some Just of the few. best looks and definitely mm. one of the worst in Drag Race history. Uh, Gottmik won the challenge with Utica. What? Utica. Oh, Utica? No, Utica. Utica, okay. Good. Utica. Got- you, you called her Utica. Got- Gottmik won the challenge with Utica? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nipping what? at her heels. And the gift bag doll of the South, Lala Ree, ended up in the bottom with Joey J, who, after a pretty fancy lip sync, Miss Joey J is gay, sashayed away. And Lala Ree, hold on to fight another day. Wow, all that. All that. <laughs> so now that two whoever queens have gone. The, whoever wrote the outline is a poet, the poet laureate of drag. Girl, they got they got a future ahead at Hallmark, I can tell. Um. <laughs> Two queens have now gone home, six episodes in, and we are officially keeping it pumping, queen. <laughs> Honey, keep it keep it pumping. But before we continue on with this episode, this is a race chaser action alert, okay? Beep, 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 beep. Uh, will you play some kind of news music behind us when we do this? Okay. 
Listen up. Raise Chasers, up. we need you to spring into action. We know you're all very active and vocal on social media, and this is a cause that is very important. Listen up, coach. Coach. And I'm not talking Craig T. Nelson, okay? I'm and I'm talking... not talking about if you're sitting in Comfort Plus. <laughs> I'm, we're talking or behind about it. The high end brand, Coach. Uh, we had a little bit of intel. Uh, we glossed over it really too quickly. But really, the girls should be allowed to keep those bags. Give so her a want... bag! So, Willem, you had this amazing idea. Yes, I heard that the girls slaved away on those bags, designed them, mm-hmm. um, put put more effort into designing them than their outfits in some cases. Well, And um, the girls were... We're slighted, in my opinion. If you Shut give a girl, a, if you give a girl a handbag and then you try to take it out of her hand, you'll lose you a do, hand. Y- yeah, honestly, you're just shitbagging her because, like, <laughs> if you give a girl a purse, that's her bag. If she designed that bag, that's her bag. And then for them to not even like be for sale for like a charity or something, like Coach could do some good and like auction them off. But instead, the they're bags? probably where are the bags, Coach? Where coach are, are the bags? bags. Honestly, it's it's such a slight to the girls like, oh, we're going to use this for a little challenge thing. Get up the the LGBT rainbow for the coach company, you know, because everybody wants to throw in their little rainbow however they can. Uh-huh. But then to take the bags out of the hands that advertise them, like, I get it's it. It's wacky. It's strange. It Because, and you mentioned this, like, it's not even like they're, you know, sellable merchandise they're that not. they would go back on the shelf. These are one of a kind made for this challenge. La la, we peel that skew coat off, girl. Give no, the okay. girls their bags back. So we want you to spring on Twitter, spring mm-hmm. onto Twitter. We want you to tag Coach. Please, um, and us. And, and tag us. And why don't we do a hashtag... Um, what do you think? Give back the bags? What um, do you think? Give her her bag. <laughs> give, give her her, her, her bag. bag. That's G-I-V-E-H-E-R-H-E-R-B-A-G. <laughs> give Slash. her her bag. Give her her bag. Um, so hey, give th- her her bags or give her her bag? Yeah, honestly, give how are you going to do, how you gonna <laughs> do a bag ball? And then take away the bags and just baby, leave the girls with their balls. Baby Tina, baby mama, baby Tina, Lucy, honey. Honestly. Listen, Lucy, honey. Uh, <laughs> listen, Delta Lake. Uh, <laughs> this is not going to fly. Well, we want to just we want to see if we get any reaction from coach. Those girls looked so amazing. They really rocked those fucking bags. Yeah. And they deserve them. I want to know where are the bags? You know, where are the bags. Where where are the bags? I think where that honestly, if it was if it was up to coach, I feel like they might have gotten to keep them. But I'm sure, you know, for leaks and stuff, you had to like you couldn't give the girls the bags to take home because, you know, it's part of the challenge. Oh, okay. X, Y, Z. But okay. World okay. of Wonder should have okay. had the foresight to like put them aside and say, girls, here's your bags. I know there aren't many gigs this season or many bright spots to look forward to. Here's a free ugly pocketbook that you designed for a challenge. <laughs> they could have at least done clear. that. I think the bags are cute. Honestly, I thought some of the bags were cute. I love Lala's bag, but like Joey J's bag, um, you could only get me to hold that if it was in a cold, dead hand. (laughs) Well, tag coach, tag us, and we'll keep you updated on how this goes. Um, There's another challenge happening, not to like delay the start of this episode even more. Um, (laughs) What? Uh... The silhouette challenge? No, the the girl Swinging that did dicks and red light. <laughs> the girl that did La La Ree's bag challenge. Mm, I think bread. it was cornbread jeté. I worked with her this weekend at Executive Suites. Yeah, and um, I was like, "Girl, you were the to-go bag of life." Yeah, um, we had so much fun. She let me use her brush. Hmm. Uh, oh, you were being a Shanita, honey. I walked right in and I said, "Who's got a brush?" Because I had Who's that got 30- a brush. I need bobby pins, I need safety pins, and I also need an outfit for my second number. Um, okay, <laughs> what can we do? What can we do? Yeah, it was very that, but I stopped for pins on the way down to um, <laughs> Long Beach because I was like, I'm not walking into a room with Morgan and Delta and then asking for a bobby pin first thing after I haven't seen them in months. Some of the girls. Uh, some of the girls. Uh, this disco mentory, it's episode six. Season 13, we are finally mm-hmm. at the top of the episode. The yeah. lipstick message from the outgoing queen, Miss Joey J, says, I'm mm-hmm. a gay-ass bitch. I'm who? Joey J. 
Jay. Joey J. <laughs> yes. We live, we laugh, we love. I mean, she'll be missed. What a what I mean, a... Candy's gonna miss her. Her sister oh, slam God. piece is gone. <laughs> she said she said, it's fine. After we get out of here, I will we will be able to have sex properly. But until then, uh, oh, I'm, gonna win the, I'm gonna win the show. Yeah. Um Olivia goes ahead and asks very delicately. So after after the episode, of course, shows us the whole explosive fight from the last Untucked, Olivia's like, so how are we feeling about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this is this is one of my, my favorite parts about reality television is when a girl says, play back the tape. And then they do. And then and they you're do. Like, and you're like, oh, like it's hard you can't be on both teams both sides so well, well it was i felt like it was i mean tamisha was was uh reaffirming what she said before mm-hmm. and candy was like candy was like no you did it and then roll back the tape and then they play back the tape and i think it was what tamisha was saying she said correct she definitely expressed um that she had a dislike for a few of the girls there, but she it was it was weird because the way she was saying it, it was a backwards compliment. So her intent wasn't to be a bitch, but it came off that way a little bit. Well, it just, was to be a little. And, and the way I looked at it, it was like, um, uh, I may not care for you, some of you girls personally, but like <laughs> giving you your props for your makeup and your influencing and all that. It was just like the wrong way to deliver a compliment for sure. Yeah. Um, so I mean, but I mean, she kind of uh, she's feeling like the winner's circle girls are sort of looking down upon, or worse, not even seeing the other girls. Well, the other I mean, girls. It's it's a it's a competition, and Shemita girls aren't seen as competition to the other girls. I mean, every season you walk into the room, and then you kind of say to yourself in your head, "How do I get front row at the reunion? Which of these girls do I need to eliminate?" <laughs> you wear a head to toe tartan uh, McQueen mm-hmm. suit, Raja Raja look. Row. Um, you get don't row. you think what Tamisha said is like really evolved? That's what you heard, but that's not what I said. Because so much conflict that happens in the world is the way people perceive what was said versus what was actually said. Yes. Yeah, but she didn't think that she said what she actually said. <laughs> because it I know would... what I know how she felt it, but it's not how <laughs> it came out, I feel like. It would also be different if it was a completely non-inflammatory statement that she actually said that was taken the wrong way. Hey, I have a pair of the Tamisha shoes, too. Me, too. What cool merch, dude. I mean, really, yeah. Uh, yeah. What fucking um, cool merch. Nick just got the slides. Oh, she yeah. has a pool slide? Uh, the honey pool sliding about. Pool side. Oh, I love that. Uh-huh. Um... The Lala sums it up. She says Atlanta people don't take no shit and Brooklyn people don't take no shit. That's right. Um, I feel like there's a couple people from every town that don't take no shit. And that's why we'd like to talk to you about clean tushy. You're <laughs> you're from Philadelphia, and I bet. Honey, I Pennsylvania no girls. There. We don't take no shit. We throw no. batteries at Santa Claus. We have a jail <laughs> in our football stadium. We're the only um, stadium with the jail. Your um, mom throws Christmas trees into the in-ground pool. I mean, yeah. you Happens. don't, you don't fuck. And, and it's true. And a reality show like Drag Race is going to cast the biggest, the boldest personalities possible and put them in a room for this reason. And we all love to watch it. So why don't we take a break and we'll get into some more. Um, oh, the girls are fighting. No brawls, girl. Oh. Honey. <laughs> one thing we both have in common wicked beauty oh well yes that but also we have both been featured on a 
bit of reality TV in our time. Oh, why, yes. Over the past 30 years, reality TV has become a major player in entertainment and culture, a place to see social and political movements play out in real time, from racial tensions on the real world New York to gender dynamics on The Bachelor. And on the podcast Spectacle, that's what they get into. Hosted by writer, comedian, and producer Mariah Smith, along with special guests like Queer Eyes Bobby Burke or Chris Sapphire from The Circle US. Plus, your favorite commentators and comedians analyzing these iconic moments we all remember. Vulture's Brian Moylan, comedian Nicole Byer, or scholar Raquel Gates. You'll nerd out on everything from problematic producing to racist casting and messed up editing. And then you'll hear about some episodes that have been scrubbed from TV history entirely. (laughs) Work. In each episode of Spectacle, they relive the most popular moments in TV history and how these shows changed our culture. Shows like Survivor, 90 Day Fiance, The Real Housewives, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Queer Eye, and The Bachelor. So make sure you check out Spectacle, hosted by Mariah Smith. You can subscribe to it and download episodes anywhere you get your podcast. Spectacle, an unscripted history of reality TV, is a new documentary podcast series from Neon Hum Media. Friends don't let friends live with anything less than amazing hair. So think of me as your friend. Well, more like a sister. And I want you to be happy and try Function of Beauty. Oh, yes, honey. Function of Beauty is the world leader in customizable beauty, offering precise formulations for your hair's specific needs. First, take a quick but thorough quiz to tell them a little bit about your hair type. Straight, wavy, curly, coily. And hair goals such as lengthen, volumize, oil control. Keep out of my mouth while... (laughs) Never mind, that one I can do on my own. Next, choose your color and fragrance or go fragrance and dye free. Then, Function's team determines the perfect blend of ingredients, bottles your formula, and delivers it to you along with fun seasonal stickers and all the instructions you need. Every ingredient Function of Beauty uses is vegan and cruelty-free, and they never use sulfates or parabens. And you can also go completely silicone-free. No mm. still here, honey! <laughs> and Function of Beauty offers completely personalized formulas for body and skin care as well so you can customize your beauty routine from hair to toe I like the shampoo because it has my name on it and I know that if it keeps getting lower somebody's using it and they shouldn't be using it. It can be so overwhelming going into a store and you don't know what you're getting and what is going to be right for you so Function of Beauty personalizes this stuff for you and you know it's going to be healthy and uh, and responsible. Yeah I never buy off the shelf anymore just to be disappointed. I go to functionofbeauty.com slash Drag. And then I take the quiz and I just save 20% on my first order. And you can do the same thing. It's wonderful. You should try. All right. That applies to their full range of customized hair, skin, and body products. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash drag. drag. And let them know that we sent you to get 20% off your first order. Functionofbeauty.com slash drag. drag. Um, so this video message from RuPaul. Ooh, girl. Hey, bad girls. Whether you're hot stuff or a super freak, mm-hmm. if you want to stay alive, you better mm-hmm. shake that groove thing, girl. Mm-hmm. Or this could be your last dance. Mm-hmm. Toot toot. Hi. And the girls look really confused because none of them have heard of disco before. So they have no <laughs> idea what this is about. And then in comes RuPaul. Oh, she says, I'm your host, RuPaul's Charles Nelson Riley. <laughs> and the girls laugh because if you don't laugh when RuPaul says something, you're not doing you your home. job. You go, home. Uh, you go home. Come <laughs> on, Ash Scott. Um, How can none of the girls, including Tina Burner, know who, not know who Charles Nelson Riley is? Well, I kind of... I kind of know the only well, whoever wrote I this kn- outline doesn't know because they spelled it wrong. Well, the, oh wow! I he, Charles Why Nelson you all Riley. Keep saying whoever wrote this outline. L- whoever wrote it. We're whoever wrote. One of our interns over at corporate. I mean, yeah. it's just um, Charles Nelson Riley. The only reason I really know his name is mm-hmm. because there's a Golden Girls joke about him. Oh, okay. And and the Rose is reading the names of all the people who are going to be at this fancy event. She's like Dom DeLuise, and they're all like, "Wow, Lonnie Anderson, wow, Charles Nelson Riley," and then they don't say anything. <laughs> they don't. Oh. They don't say wow. So it's shady, Jordan. Um, 
She's, uh, she was the center square of Hollywood right. Squares. He was a game show staple. He was on the yeah. Match Game, the original thing that Snatch Game is ripped off of. Like, he was just this comedian who was everywhere. He, I'm pretty sure he had a theater in Florida, too. Mm. Kind of like the Burt Reynolds Theater, where it was like dinner mm. show type of stuff. He was an out gay man, kind of being an out gay man on television, even if he didn't say it. Um, so he's like, just really rotten. Known for being just like really rot, rot. Yeah, humor. I mean one of one of his boyfriends fell out of a um a San Francisco hotel window after that. So I mean, I'd be mad too if my trade fell out a window. Honey, sometimes the trade jumps out a window after the. <laughs> Honey, the joke didn't land, but he did. When the <laughs> when the overhead lighting turns on by mistake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> damn that's why you just keep the bathroom light on with the door cracked <laughs> the single candle method is really what i prefer um so in the mini challenge the the queens get into teams and have to create eye-popping designer dresses made out of wallpaper provided by spoonflower.com <sighs> To prove their design doesn't blend in, they model the dress in front of a wall featuring the same wallpaper design. Mm -hmm. Um, The queens need to pair up. Their partner will be with them for the mini and the maxi this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mini and the main. Gottmik gets the distinction of getting to choose which pair to join once they're all teamed up because he won last week. Join the throuple. The teams go like this. Denali and Rosé, Lala and Simone, Mm -hmm. and... uh, Utica uh, says, oh, Olivia was first. Sorry oh, to whoever was trying to grab her. So sure, I guess, goes to Elliot and Tamisha as a team. <laughs> and then <laughs> there's uh, always that team. Yeah. And then got like, make, mm, fuck oh. my drag. Yeah. Me <laughs> and the queer for sure. <laughs> um, the the final team, the thruple is uh, Candy, Tina and got Mick. Right. Whose who's wallpaper? What wallpaper would have you chosen? The flowers, buttons, pizza, sushi, or pink leopard? It's kind of almost you, the pink leopard of like the the bruise dress that you try to knock off. I know, and you would think that I would choose that one, but I really the sushi was really speaking to me, and I, mm-hmm. I think it might have been just because Got Mick's presentation of it was so flawless and stunning. I, I really, I actually looked on Spoonflower to see what it was all about, mm-hmm. um, and they have. They have some cute stuff. They have cute drapes and cute uh, cute wallpaper patterns. If you want some of that uh, nice. like temporary wallpaper, they do that stuff. If you go to uh, forkweed.net, they do rugs too. Forkweed? Forkweed.net. Um, <laughs> I I like Lala, Lala Ree's bitch. I wanted a slice of that. And them little, oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, pizzaroni nipple covers. Honey, she's, Honey. Uh, she get, she gives it to me. I love her. Uh, Elliot so and Tamisha funny. win this challenge, and they each mm-hmm. get a twenty five hundred dollar gift card to Spoonflower dot com. That's a major mini challenge prize. Okay, that's pretty it, fierce. It was, but like I didn't get how they won. Oh, I okay. I I I didn't see it. Hmm? I saw it, but I didn't see it. I was like, really. I, I, I did not I thought that if anything they might be at the opposite end of the winner for this one because some of the other ones were so cute oh. and like charming and this one for me just gave um next to Nooch. <laughs> next to Nooch. <laughs> Welcome to the new Forever Dog podcast. Next, next to, to Nooch. Nooch. Where we feed crickets <laughs> Nooch. <laughs> And then listen to them gas. The um, girl that'll give them gas. Tips. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad Tamisha won something though. I'm happy for him. Um, Photosynthesis. That was funny. Um, <laughs> uh, have you seen the meme of the Mean Girls? The uh, the Tina Burner, Candy Muse, uh, and Got Mick. There's a meme of them as um, Ronald McDonald. Oh, uh, Grimace, the purple <laughs> one. Yeah, I. I actually. Grimace. Bitch, how how are we the same person? Because I have that screen cap on my phone to send to you right now. It's so uh, funny, <laughs> so cute. It's accurate. God it bless the mean girls. Accurate as hell. I Get in, who... get in, loser. We're going dragging. I don't know who would go on a reality show and instantly get into a click. I mean, that's sort of, I don't, I don't, I don't understand personally how mm-hmm. someone would do that, but, um, click, click fish, but I guess it's, a, it's you know, clicks are dangerous. <laughs> clicks can be dangerous. 
they just, people have already been doing the Alaska Talks comparison. And you know what? Clicks Wait. are dangerous, but it gives you storyline because when you finally break up out of the click, then it's a story day. It's good. And, and you need a storyline if if you're not like, you know, already in good with the producers and texting them and smoking out with them and stuff. Um, that's helpful. Or <laughs> sucking them. Um, this maxi challenge, this disco menery, it's going to be a dancing documentary about the beat that defined a generation. Yeah. Disco. Um, these girls the are going to Kyle- leave- The Kylie Minogue album that defined a generation. <laughs> Honey. Disco magic honey it is it's so such a good album um the girls are going to need to learn choreography and embody the disco spirit um yeah i i was confused as to what this was it, uh, <laughs> are they singing are they telling a story through dance but no stories were told through dance it wasn't like a modern thing where they were like even the disco sucks girls i was like how are they showing that disco sucks by doing disco moves well, like, it's just like basically a voiceover and then watch these girls dance now. And then another voiceover. Now these girls are going to twirl. It like, was a dance challenge. There were some was, scenes like the velvet rope, the group dancing. It was a dance challenge, but they used the opportunity to make it really educational. RuPaul had some. so, And obviously, you know, I mean, to us, we're like, we already know about disco. But like, obviously, the younger generation who is at Drag Race didn't know very much about disco. So I think it's cool that, you know, RuPaul said, God damn it. We need to teach the children about disco. I mean, even the adults don't know about disco, though, like. Um, Tina Burner, she's definitely in her 30s. And, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. s- d- there's some tr- songs that you just know, like Tell Me Houston, like Don't Leave Me This Way, Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive. Like these are right. songs. Um, at least she knew a couple. At least she knew uh, yeah. that, that Gypsies wasn't disco. I like Gypsy the best. I um, like Gypsy the best. The um, groups are Birth of Disco, Disco and Sex, Studio 54, Disco Fashion, and Disco Sucks. sucks. Uh, um, in, the, in the workroom, Utica is saying that um, she she gives a little read to one of her sisters, to read. Olivia, about Tina. She says, that, that hair actually makes Tina look small. And Olivia's like, say it out loud. Say it to him. Say it to him. She's like, that's how you read, girl. This is what we do. And, tell and- him. <laughs> tell him that his giant wig makes him look small. <laughs> <laughs> tell him. <laughs> um, I definitely love that this this is like re- reading with training wheels. She's like, I'm, yeah. I'm Tina. That, that hair <laughs> actually makes you look small. <laughs> and Tina Burner's so quick, she came back and she said, honey, as, th- as long as I stand next to Lala, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! Uh, boing, 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 boing. 100%. She's um, very quick, very funny. Oh, we well, look lo- who's here. Oh, come on, Ascot. Come on, Ascot. Now, Rue, you'll need to sign in in the visitor's lock. Thank you. Okay, cool. Now you can come in. Did um, you wait? Did you catch the misdirect to the commercial before the walkthrough, which is RuPaul saying to Rose, if you were closer, I would reach out and smack you. She didn't actually say it to Rose, but they made it look like she did. Yeah, they, they love to do that. Um, <laughs> take off your hat, you balding the, bitch. The non essential misdirect, which. <laughs> Just to, just to fuck with people if if they aren't paying attention, which you know, just to really let people have it. Denali and Rose have a quick chat with RuPaul to tell Ru how amazing they are. <laughs> <laughs> Denali puts on some hair, which she does not wear later. Instead, she wears this little pink thing, which is like the least disco wig I have ever seen on a headband. And I was Tina. like, oh, maybe she got the headband on because she don't want to whip it off because you know disco. And then I'm like, wait, she had an ice skater like. Lara Croft braid on her head and that stayed fine and didn't budge. So what's with this headband? Oh, headband. I, I think, okay, I think, yes. I think we'll get to that when we get to that fucking, because... Yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm just trying to shit talk because, early, my bad. You know, it's fine. <laughs> what Denali has done a lot of things. Denali has ice skated on cruise ships. Uh, she has roller skated on volcanoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, she ha- she is very good at dancing, and so is Rosé. Um, and Rosé gets the dreaded, you're not being vulnerable. 
speech from RuPaul, which I've had this speech and it doesn't it doesn't feel great. Honey, all the greats have had it. Chad Michaels probably had mm-hmm. it my mm-hmm. season. Um, all the good ones do. All the mm-hmm. all the ones that you're like, ooh, I love her, but then the underdog wins that season. All of them have this speech. <laughs> it's it's honestly the same probably 20 storylines recycled every year mostly with a little oh. new stuff thrown in for girls. You got your underdog, you got your main girl, you got the bitch, you got the 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 upstart, the girl. So these chats are all interchangeable. I'm sure you could edit together the same storyline with a different cast of characters with the exact same outcome. It's because Drag Race is the story of the tenacity of the human spirit. So some things are archetypal and universal. As long as you got some ass in there, I agree. Exactly. Tenacity. Um, <laughs> Rue is explaining about the disco sucks movement to Lala Ree and Simone. Mm-hmm. And um, the whole room learns about this moment from Rue. Yeah. Um, yeah. She swirls her hips and says, this is a revolution. That's what I do, mama. That's what I do. That's what I do. I like that uh, because I think it's an important moment. Uh, And I mean, look up sort of things about the Disco Sucks movement uh, because it's very interesting. And there's actually, I think there was a lot of like racial undertones. Oh, homophobia and racism. Homophobia. Rampant. Just so much. Like, like that. The fact that regular dancing didn't have like hips and like the lasciviousness, the same way that they tried to outlaw rock and roll back in the day. When the actual right. pioneers that pioneered the music were playing it before all the white people stole it. Um, Candy's sweet refrain. If, um, if you notice something, every walk around, I feel like this season has had a candy moment. I feel like they do candy every walk around. And a lot of the girls haven't even gotten one. <laughs> I feel like. She's, she's very entertaining and she keeps Rue laughing and that's, you know, that's the that's the name of the game and it, it's very entertaining to watch. Candy mm-hmm. said, "My favorite disco song is that Pussycat Girls." Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> that part oh, when Nicole shit. Scherzinger throws it back. Yeah, and RuPaul <laughs> said, "If you were next to me right now, I would actually slap you." That's where the slap goes. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, but yeah, then we get another. We we're getting a lot of KG responses from the uh, from the uh, queens with RuPaul uh, when she's no, asking what yes, your favorite disco no, song yes. was. Yes, no, yes, no. Hmm. Well, I have so many. I'm just gonna keep them to myself. And that's the way to do it. Hold your cards close to your chest. Right. Why don't we take a break and we'll come right back for some choreography rehearsal. So stretch. I'm clocking out. I'm make done. Sure you st- make sure you stretch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that you listeners won't be shocked by this, but Helix makes our favorite mattresses. They really do. Helix Sleep makes personalized mattresses in America and ships them straight to your door with a free no-contact delivery, free returns, and up to a 100-night sleep trial. To choose a mattress, Helix made a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. With Helix, there's no more confusion and no more compromise. If you like a firm, semi-firm, semi-soft, or a soft mattress, or you sleep on your stomach, your back, your neck, whatever your taste is, Helix has a unique mattress for you. How was the quiz for you? Did you pass? I passed. I passed with flying colors. Um, I'm just waiting for Helix to start making some headboards, too, to go with these mattresses, because I need something durable. Girl, the sleep quiz is amazing, and they tell you exactly what is going to work for you, and I love it, and I'm proud to announce that i uh i'm upgrading to a mi- midnight lux oh, okay. the midnight lux yeah baby yeah oh. baby yeah. see i'm a dust girl well what are you waiting for you've heard us talk about helix so you can find out for yourself just go to helix sleep.com slash drag and take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And if you finish the sleep quiz before two minutes, just put your head down on your desk and put your hand up. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders for Race Chaser listeners. That's right. Get up to $200 off at helixsleep.com slash drag. drag. 
Thrive Market is an online membership-based market on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Shopping with Thrive Market is healthy without the hassle. You can easily shop 70-plus diets and values like keto, paleo, gluten-free. I love Thrive Market because... It's great that you can just type in what your specific needs are. And I'm a specific kind of girl. I like to go gluten free. I like to go vegetarian. So it's easy to just like filter out everything that doesn't fit into there. I got some serious gluten-free cookie mix chocolate chip mm-hmm. cookie mix you've been cooking i was able to make these <gasps> cookies i'm so proud That's of how you easy it was and they were delicious oh uh, my how wonderful i like using the dairy-free option when i shop on thrive because it mm-hmm. literally creates this online store for you with only products that are right for your for your body um and mm-hmm. thrive market honestly has so many things it's a one-stop shop for everything organic essential groceries clean beauty safe supplements and non toxic home, uh, cleaner things, and ethical meats, sustainable seafood, clean wine, and more. And their products are ethically sourced. That's right. Thrive Market has two new membership options. One month membership for $9.95 or 12 month membership for $5 a month, billed at $59.95. And an exciting new offer that's exclusively available only for our listeners. Join today to get 25% off your first order and a free gift. Orders of $49 or more are shipped for free and delivered with carbon neutral shipping from their zero waste warehouse. Join Thrive Market today to get 25% off your first order and an exclusive free gift. The only way to get this offer is by going to thrivemarket.com slash drag. That's T H R I V E market.com slash drag. drag to get the exclusive offer of 25% off your first order and a free gift. And you can't get this offer anywhere else. Go to thrivemarket.com slash drag. All right, choreography time, ladies. Girls, put on your dance belts. Uh, mm-hmm. Dance belts. <laughs> Get your dance yeah. belt on, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to see no bulges. No bulges. Slick um, Barbie doll crotches. The <laughs> the choreo rehearsal with Miguel Zarate. The girls, mm-hmm. the trio is up first. So uh, we the got mean girls. Tina. We are the mean girls. Girl. We live in West Hollywood. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all the hit. Um, the, <laughs> so, uh, Got Mick, Tina, and Candy are doing this little seatbelt dance, and they got that on lock for sure. Child lock. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> La La Ree. <laughs> La La Ree so and Simone funny. get a lesson in thrusting, which, I mean, this comes... I don't know how there wasn't a show... Not one of those faggots made a showgirl's joke on... She's all thrust. Thrust it. Thrust it. <laughs> thrust it. <laughs> um, Elliot and Tamisha... Basically, the choreographer is telling La La Ree and Simone to just do a dick slang instead of, um, you know, a little hip check. Like, sexy girl hip check. He's like, no, slang it. Slang it. Slang yeah, it. girl. Um, so I am mad at that. Uh, no. Elliot Tamisha, uh, unfortunately got hula hoops and it did not look like that either of them wanted it in the same way that the girls are like, here, you get a scarf. This is, this reeks of season five, the bubble wand controversy here. You hold a harp. You get a seashell bitch. Like it's just, I, I think that it kind of hinders a girl. Um, uh... here, hold this giant hoop and, and let let the hoop be the star, not you. You know? The hoop is spinning, not you. I didn't get a prop for the season five promo. I think Well, they, they were said, too worried about that wig stain on your head, darling. They said your power is magic. You know, power, 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 a, a tool or a... Uh-huh. You know, or a yeah. Um, so, he yeah. Said, Only girls with hands power. that go to the floor get props. My, uh, you know what? That was borrowed from the designer. Okay. Mm. So. <laughs> What's that it great was for that, aubergine? It was that ankle length, which we're all a fan of. Um, the uh, This is hard. It is hard to be handed a hula hoop. I know you're one of those girls who hula hoops the house down, right? 
I can do a little hooping, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, I can't even wear hoop earrings. I'm so bad. Sure. I, like, I can't You're do hula button, yeah. hooping. Right. I can't well, do Well, it's because you can't feel your hips when you're in drag because of all the padding. So you don't really know. You can't tell. I can't my, feel my hips. <laughs> my real hips are in a completely different state. Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, a, no. That's... A different time zone. Um, She, okay. Uh, Tamisha reveals that she has an ostomy bag on her stomach and she, so she's attempting to do, and she's doing a great job of doing all these dance moves without, you know, while concealing this, which is wild. Yeah. And, and like kind of amazing that she's like out there doing this stuff and like go keeping up with the paces while concealing this, like this ostomy bag on her body this is the tenacity of the human spirit honestly that's tea like not letting not letting your um your specific situation get in the way of your general goals Mm -hmm. and like tamisha should be like applauded for this aarp should be a special award show for her this year (laughs) yeah like now now do you want to do you want this to be a fan kick or more like uh you want it to break do you want it to break after 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 the highest point should I do it with both legs at the same time? I'm Just in the air. <laughs> Rosé's like, slow it down, Tina. Uh, <laughs> but no, Denali is running this this choreography rehearsal. Um, I think she's dance captain, honestly. And honestly, I, you know, I was, I was, uh, I wasn't sure who was going to win the season, but I think Denali's thighs are now a front runner. I think they are, <laughs> they've definitely taken the lead. Um uh, she she's got she's really turning it with the, this dance rehearsal. What happened? What noise. I just heard a weird noise. Oh my god, Tina Burner's behind you. It's like a hissing, a hissing noise, like a like hissing? air being released out of something. Maybe one of your tits popped. <laughs> 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 I honestly maybe have maybe, no maybe idea. one of your tits popped like in Hurricane Bianca. When the boobs <laughs> popped and powder flew all over. Oh my Jesus! That's what happens when tits pop, you know. That's um, a, that is a great film. Turner classic movies. What a wonderful thing. <laughs> Turn um, it away. It, it's more like turn it off classic movies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. So Utica and Olivia with this fabric, it looks like um. A girl that's trying to fold a fitted sheet with one hand. <laughs> Utica is not getting this. Um, but it it really gives uh, Lala some good interview chair moments, which honestly, yeah. I, I could deal with the half hour every week of Lala just talking shit and kikiing and calling God a bitch and then girl. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. M- mean girls on three. <laughs> one, two. So, oh, so that's, that's the, the click. <laughs> oh, that's the click. Oh, that's the click. Oh, oh. okay. The mirror chats today are getting into some of the girls' backstory. Uh, Olivia reveals that she was over 300 pounds in high school, and uh, she was struggling with her identity, and she wasn't out. Um, But they show the pictures, and it's like, oh, that's how you got that shape, mama. Right. And she reveals that, like, she got, you know, she went on a fitness journey and, like, got into, like, theater and acting, which led her to drag. Um, But it was really nice to, like, get into uh, her story a little bit. Um, Candy reveals some a little bit about her background. Her mother was in and out of jail. She uh, found her confidence from the streets. And so she explains that that's why she's sometimes quick to be defensive because she's always trying to protect herself, which kind of like shows us a little bit of like what we were seeing in Untucked and like, you know, her, her fucking history and her story. And it makes her more three dimensional. And I love that. I love Candy Mises. I love hearing more about Tamisha, too, um, and seeing that Mm -hmm. she had a champion in the projects where she grew up who, you know, saw a talent, put her in, like, this cheerleading team for kids, even though Mm -hmm. they didn't have a sports team to cheer for, um, and that, you know, she she credits that person out there that put her on the road that led her to this life. So that was really nice to say. I, I always wanted to credit my high school drama teacher for, like, you know, we had a production in high school where there were two leads played by people in drag and I was like, oh my God. And then I didn't get cast. Oh, I was understudy. 
the, sh- Even I- the next day, the school burnt Girl. to the ground, and no one Girl. was able to prove what happened. They made they made me get get all the boys up in drags <laughs> and get them outfits and things, but like oh, I'm, so you were the stylist? Yeah, that's what they did. They oh. said uh, they said, "How about we let this straight boy do it, and then you could just teach him how to do it." And I said, <sighs> "Okay," and plucked tootsie James effect. Gordon. So, uh, fuck Doubtfire you, Mr. Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Coco Beach High School drama department can suck it. <laughs> wow. Five, four, seven, six can suck a lot of dicks. Well, now you are the preeminent drag uh, actress of <laughs> Earth. So, fuck you. I think it um, worked out. Uh, I think it, I, I think it's going okay. Uh, not as good as RuPaul. <laughs> In this glittery purple gown with the ruffle neckline and the pink piping and lining. I love this. I love the length. It's that just to the shoe and you just see the little peep of the toe of the shoe. Love the length. She looks like a Barbie doll in a package. This is like a great, like just silhouette of the dress. And like, yeah, this is the only time it's okay for your shoulders to be larger than, you know, your (laughs) hips. Them shoulders should be three times larger than those hips, hips. but they aren't. Don't, so so. <laughs> <laughs> the other judges are also present and accounted for: Michelle Visage, uh-huh. Carson Kressley, and Style we got Lonnie Super Love Star. back again. Lonnie Love, everybody say everybody it. Say Lonnie Love. Um, this okay. Watching this, I feel like I was like, you guys, it must have been so hard not to be lip syncing. To the because you learn a song, you're used to performing it full out, and they probably told them this is just about dancing, this is not about lip singing. So, like, that's the hardest part is like, not when you're a drag queen, all you want to do is, I am the bitch who is singing the song, that's all you want to do. And so, they weren't allowed to do that, yeah, not at all. But, um, you, you who, who needs other lips moving when RuPaul is giving such stellar, uh, voiceover explaining how disco you know through the years and through dance has evolved and changed and met with come over roadblocks and all these things i don't know i'm just trying to make this challenge make sense to me because <laughs> gucci pucci susan lucci Fiorucci. I, I liked the um uh, i liked the songs i thought they were really fun i liked the dancing i think this is a fun way to like twist it up it's like it's not exactly a rusical it is just a straight up we're gonna do a dance ass challenge now the mean girls were all matching and they kind of read candy's outfit do you think that it was one of those cases where it was like oh tina was like oh well i have this amazing red and yellow so what if we did like red and yellow kind of colors and so Candy pulled out one of her B I, outfits. I, I feel like it's very know? that. They definitely decided on a color and went with it. Um, yeah, for for me, it, it just gave me um, Tina Burner as Diana Ross and then uh, Got Mick and Candy as Mary Wilson and the other one, the Cindy Bird song, right. Mary Bird song, whatever. Like it, it, two jumpsuits and then one girl gets a beaded gown. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> If that wasn't DWV, I don't know what it is. Uh, right. Well, I'm in yeah. the middle, so I'm just so, I'm gonna wear this. I'm gonna yeah. wear this. It's DWV. <laughs> I'm the middle. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh what Who, did, did you, anyone stand out for you during this? Yeah, Olivia. Olivia gave me just so much great oh. energy. Yeah. Um, and the hair had movement, the dress had movement. She had to deal with that fucking handkerchief and she still made it work and gave body. I loved Olivia for sure. I loved um, Simone and Lala as well. I thought they were just, they, their styling was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And just the dancing was so effortless and like so fierce and so fun. What? See, I feel like Denali could have been in the top if it weren't for this selection of look. And she's had such amazing looks on this season but this was like the hair wasn't really quite there and the sparkly kind of sack which i love a sparkly sack but uh i don't know it was it it wasn't uh i i agree i think it's what held her back from being in the top i definitely agree um i think that a lot of her outfits have been really like costume and like mm. really cool costumes i'm not saying it as a as a dig 
But this one, it's not a cool costume. It's it's ready to wear, and I don't know that I would wear it at all or be ready to. Um, Rosé looked fierce. Rosé, and, and she looked so good, and that silhouette was so yes, disco. So to Very have, disco. To have Miss um, Sequin Sad Sack dress next to it with a pink <laughs> wig, it didn't give it to me, like how Denali has given it to me in every episode so far. But, you know, she she performed great. Um, I feel like colorful hair, and I hate to keep harping on, on Denali because I think she's amazing, but I feel like colorful hair is not the disco era. I feel like that was more like when the 80s started to come in and people started to do sort of unnatural kind of, like the 70s was all about fucking natural hair and like natural volume and like really long. Mm -hmm. Feather frizz. Like I loved Utica's hair if it was taken down, but it looked like she pulled it back (laughs) to get it out of her face. And then she ended up looking like, um, you know. uh, Florence and the Machine. Uh, no, she. You know who she gave me? She gave me Tilda Swinton in um mm. in um what's it called that Orlando movie where like Quentin mm. Crisp mm-hmm. plays mm-hmm. her like all that. She's very that um Mondays on Mom. Well, uh, why why don't we take a break and we'll get back into the Ooh, little black dress? I'm gonna slip into a little black dress. LBD. <laughs> I don't know about you, Miss Kitty, but I feel like I'm always looking at a screen nowadays more than ever. And whether you're an avid news watcher or in serious need of a distraction, unplugging yourself is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. A great way to rest my eyes and still get the content I'm itching for. Well, I use those other holes I've got. The ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by putting in my Raycon wireless earbuds and listening to something great, like a mom podcast, maybe. That's right. Whether you're catching up on your favorite news podcast, binging an audiobook, or powering through your workout with a pumped-up playlist, a pair of Raycons in your ears can make all the difference. I personally love my Raycons. They fit me so well. They do. They're very um, sleek packaging. It comes in a little tiny, um, uh, like, carrier chargey thing. And then you take them out, and they just pop right in your ears. And they're so cute. You put the meat on the bread. Um, I feel like I'm in Star Wars. Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat-resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. And with enough battery for six hours of play time you can unplug for a while the best part raycon makes great sound accessible to everyone with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium audio brands so raycon's offering 15 percent off all the products for our listeners and here's what you got to do to get it you go to buy raycon.com slash drag 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 that's it You'll get 15% off your entire Raycon order. So feel free to grab a pair and a spare. That's 15% off at buyraycon.com slash drag. Buyraycon.com slash drag. When life gets a little overwhelming, we all have a coping mechanism we turn to. Well, what if that coping mechanism isn't actually healthy for you, though? I know what you're saying. Um, and you might know what I'm saying next, but we're going to talk about it anyway. It's better help. Totally. BetterHelp is a great resource for online counseling. They will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist with a broad range of expertise to choose from. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses from your counselor. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions from home. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. And it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling with financial aid available. So visit BetterHelp.com slash drag. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over a million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Special offer for Race Chaser listeners. You can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash drag. Oh, there must be an echo. That's BetterHelp.com slash drag. Drag for ten percent off your first month of BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done online in the comfort and safety of your own home. Get some. Try something new. Do 
Ginny Lemon. G- <laughs> no, no. Oh. Ginny. Oh, she just wants to leave. Wait, wait where are you going? I, 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 come, oh. come back. Wait, okay. Well, okay. Um, uh, right. Well. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the UK Minute. Uh, we had yes. a special guest plan. Ginny Lemon was planning on talking to us, but I guess her con- her connection cut out. or she, she, I, she decided to leave. Was that it? She just left. <laughs> Okay, she said um, she she didn't want to compete for um, in the competition when her right. burgeoning friendship stood on the line, and right. I understand. I understand. So, so we're gonna go ahead and throw to our sisters Manila and Latrice with the UK minute. It's Latrice. And I'm Manila. And it's your UK Minute. On episode four, it's a morning talk show challenge. Are you impressed with what you saw? For the most part, it was good, y'all. Ooh, I loved it. I loved sorta? it. Sort mm-hmm. of? The queens bring their uh, monster mash looks on the runway. Uh, who scared you? Ooh, um, ooh, there was a lot of scary things happening, <laughs> but it was a good scare. It was a good scare. Also, what happened during that lip sync, girl? I'm so confused. Girl, she hit it, but punched it, and I'm <laughs> clocked out. Gone. <laughs> For more recaps of season two of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, check out The Chop every Tuesday here on the Mom Network. Category is, is little black dress. All right, here we go. Mm-hmm. What first on the stage, we have Miss Tinta Burnter. Yes. Um, first, she's in a jumpsuit that says "wet paint," uh-huh. and um, she wears that cover. She wears that cover up for. She doesn't do the tear away right away. She says, "I'm going to wear this for half the runway, bitch." Yeah, the the I love, love it the from, dress. I love it from the neck down. The, the hair for me um, doesn't complement the dress in the way that I think it could. Um, but it fits her great. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, that's what I'll say. Love about that. the dress. Uh, burn the hair. Okay. Um, it won't burn. It'll just melt. Did you it, see it? It was so cheap. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you throw in the campfire and it turns the flame blue. I mean, you know it's just toxic. Okay. Um, <laughs> Candy Musington, I love this. This is fucking fierce. I love Me this. Me too. It's just, it's just well executed. It's, it's mm-hmm. cool. Um, she made it all art school and did like the same marks of the dress on her neck, and like she did a dirty yep. look. I loved it. A little matching. I clutch. love. Yes, the makeup is really taking it there. I, I adore this. I, I, uh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Got Mikatina wearing Marco Marco. Ooh, 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 ooh. No. I love this. What a th- and this is what when they first said little black dress and then they went to commercial. I was like, I would do like I would if I if I was on the runway, I would do something where it was like a physically very very small dress. Mm-hmm. I didn't, of course, think of this. This is genius. But that's but it's like taking the little aspect and really making it little. I love this. I mean, Got Mick is just fucking visionary. I mean, there's only one tape that could hold on a dress like that. I wonder where she got it. Oh, Willems. <laughs> Willems patented duct tape. Oh, it comes in, it comes in patent now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this Elliot little Elliot black dress Tina? Mm-hmm. is a beautiful dress i love it it says uh wife going to the funeral when she already got her second husband lined up it's just this hair that that like i love it but like he either wears that that short wig with the side part Mm -hmm. style or long like curled but flat like i just want to hang it upside down and give him some volume a little bit because like that dark root it just looks like there's anyway he looks beautiful what I yeah, wear she does, and I think it just could have it could have been elevated with a couple of styling choices: a purse, a sunglass, something. a hat that says "I'm the f- going to the funeral." Yeah, rich something. It it gave me rich lady at Neiman's. It didn't uh, give right. me on the runway at RuPaul's Drag Race. Her but shoe if choice you were is at great. Neiman's. You would have a purse. This look calls for a handbag. A lady can never me. be too sure. 
A lady is never short. And she has her coat. So it's like a purse would have elevated it to me and not just been like, I look nice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she does look nice. Yeah. Um, Tamisha uh, looks really nice. And um, when she says that she has the ostomy bag, now some of her uh, more architectural costumes are kind of rationalized in my head oh she was trying to right. hide something or but this dress is beautiful and i i would wear it i'd shorten it a little but like i love the architecture and the wings of it it's like a playboy bunny walking down the the runway yeah a little bit. um yeah classy. she looks beautiful and her hair looks fantastic her hair mm-hmm. looks the best it has all season this, this is me. the hair i like on miss tamisha just a little yes. bit of biggerness like not not flat yeah no you, uh, I, I, I can't. You need to handle Miss 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 Olivia. I can't even. Olivia, do this. Olivia Lux. Oh, love it. Pussy, so good. Pussy on fire. I Honey. mean, yes, it's a simple dress, but you see, she's holding a purse, and the mm-hmm. hair has something to say. The so hair is this, talking the whole way down the runway. Yes. So this is like so much fun. She looks sexy she uh, there's a little bit of whimsy and humor with the tiny purse it's her thing mm. i'm into this i love this it's fantastic honey rupaul said oh we got a ruby red stand in for season two. Oh wait we're not getting a season two never mind oh, <laughs> ruby is red <laughs> ruby yeah. uh olivia looks fucking fabulous um mm. utica comes out in this Audrey Hepburn inspired breakfast at Tiffany's type of look with a hook in her hat. And they immediately yeah. cut to Michelle going, huh? <laughs> like they want to make it, they want to make, make it known that the judges don't get it. But like Utica, Utica knows. Um, I love it. I thought I think it was it's, so cool. Yeah. I think it's cool to find inspiration in something and then build a whole outfit around it. Um, and even if you didn't know what it was, she's still a gold ass fucking Audrey Hepburn, like tin woman robot fucking. I don't like she kind of looks like that creature from Monsters. Uh, ah, real monsters. The, mm-hmm. the, the holding the character eye. a little bit. She like it's kind of that it's like scary, but it kind of reminds me of the the mom from Coraline a little bit. I love it. It's cool to me. I like it, too. And untucked under the different light, though, it didn't photograph how it did on stage at all. So I'm wondering how the judges actually saw it. And maybe that's why they didn't get it. But um, cool look. Love it. Denali comes out as this sexy black widow with a little web cape. And then she does a reveal and takes off this uh, hat moment that she has. And it's revealed that oh, she's a spider. It's an exquisite dress. I mean, the spider the spider web detail is so fun and so sickening. I love this. Curse of the Spider Woman. Denali's given so many different looks this season. Like She really is. She definitely needs to put her name on her cartoons and her merch because <laughs> it's been different looks every time you turn around. What do you think Team. of Rosé's look for the um, She's got the gray tool kind of fluffing out. I mean, I just, I, I, okay. I, I think it looks cool. I mean, it's a very well-made garment. It looks tool. I would love for her to just be like, I'm a pussy woman, especially in a category like little black dress. It did with, like with the makeup and the hair. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish it was a little just like softer, like I'm a girl, you know, but the dress is very well made. It really it makes the silhouette pop. It's really cool. I don't know any girl that has ever said, yeah, make my waist look bigger. <laughs> but yeah, right. Rosé's does. And she's just like a bobblehead floating on top of a mattress for me. <laughs> like, I, I wish the hair was different. Like the diff, I wish it was the same gray as the tool or the exact opposite or something. But like, I I would love this dress to sit on at a picnic at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> now now Miss La La Ree in this cookie cutter, she cutting the coochie right off in this small dress with this silver necklace, which is probably all of her broken jewelries from the past ten years. Just put on a, a necklace collar of everything. <laughs> she gives sparkle fingers down by her pussy when she's walking away. And then she gives the shum of the girls who give you this under the neck moment. The this La La is, experience. This is exactly why I rarely wear 
um, short skirts on stage because for it to be the right length for me, it has Mm -hmm. to be the literal millimeter of below my pussy. It has to be so short that it's almost obscene. And then as soon as you start walking, it inevitably rides up or it does for me. Yeah, but that's how your panties come up and they know where to put the money. (laughs) So this is, I have been in this scenario so many times that I'm like, that's why I, I, that's why you listen to Jasmine masters and you always wear fucking panties. Even if you don't think they're going to show because you never know if the skirt is going to ride up. So at least she was wearing a matching pussy pantaloon here. Mm Mm-hmm. Ah, she's my of the week. I love it. She looks cool. (laughs) (laughs) Simone is giving a nod to Rue's Back to My Roots, uh, which was originally called Black to My Roots, um, in an outfit made entirely out of braiding hair and this iconic uh, Matthew hairstyle that Rue's sporting, sported back then with, like, the braiding hair and, like, the the geometry. It's wonderful. And, And RuPaul does almost a 90 degree turn. To show how pleased she is. She turned. Just, and you can't, you can't really even get into the details on the TV because of the distance of the cameras. But if you check out Simone's Instagram, the Mm -hmm. fucking dress is so exquisite. It's made out of fucking braids. And the and little the Gucci thong on the back type of thing. Baby, uh, and ooh, did you check out damn, that shoe? Uh, that fucking shoe, honey? Shit. I it's just so good. So so fucking fierce. The, and the a re- shoe is and a reference. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. And it's shoe. not just a reference, it's like a turn on a reference that is just so exquisite. Mm-hmm. Um, Ru- Ru- RuPaul turned for the reference. She turned, honey. Turn she the beat turned. around. Uh, um, the- so the safe queens this this time are Gottmik, Denali, mm-hmm. Rosé, Lalari, and Simone. Yeah. Uh, which you know what happens next. That's this is the time when all the safe girls say, Well, I should have been in the top. <laughs> And I re- safe is not good enough for me. Girl, Shea Coulee gave a nice little Instagram saying, girls, when you're not in the top, why don't you just think about, you know, you have another chance to show your art next week, that type of thing. It should have been me. I should have been in the top. Mm, it should have been me. I actually, oh, never mind. Just because I topped one doesn't mean I am a top. Um, the- <laughs> right. Tina's just because a cannibal eats a salad doesn't make him a vegetarian. (laughs) Oh, I understand. I was like, huh? I was like, is it before the meal? (laughs) Is it bib lettuce? Um, Should we do we take another break? What are we doing? I'm out of here. This is is segment four. Girl, let's just Ginny Lemon and let Dipper finish it. We're (laughs) in the (laughs) day. We're in this oh, final yeah. segment, so we're not taking another break. We're going Correct. straight through to the we're end. We're firing through. through the end. Straight okay. through, like Simone to the top. Um, Tina, they liked her performance. Michelle mm-hmm. says her hair could be much bigger on the runway look, and I definitely agree with that. I um, second that. Candy's and said, tins. They said Candy's look was distracting. The messy face. I liked it. It was fucking cool. That's what Carson you said. Know. Yeah, no. I've seen half the stuff that Carson wears, so <gasps> I'll take fashion advice from her. Um, when, <laughs> when, and I'll and period. I won't. Um, uh, I won't take fashion advice from her. <laughs> Michelle says Elliot looks uh, too regular. Michelle's using a lot of too plain, too simple, too regular this season. Uh, it's Drag Race season Trend thirteen alert. at Trend this alert. point. Um, I think Michelle totally would have worn this as a judge, though, in season three or four in a second. This is very cachet, rich woman. Um, Michelle's mad that she can't wear it first, probably. Um, But Elliot's dancing ability definitely uh, saved him in the challenge. And she really showed herself to them. Yes. With a hula hoop. Right. Express yourself Um, using this plastic hoop. (laughs) I'll come in wearing rompers and rolling a hoop if you like. Um, uh, Tamisha, <laughs> they like her dress, but they say again it's too simple. Um, and she's and Tamisha says, you know what? Six months ago, I couldn't walk, so I turned it. <laughs> I agree, <laughs> she did. She fucking turned it. Olivia was was one hundred percent all around love. They loved her. She she gave yes. them that feeling. She gave them that um that La La Reef uh experience. 
But yes, Olivia Lowe. there was there was so much joy in her performance, and that's really what the spirit of disco, like what they were trying to convey. So she crushed it this week. Mm-hmm. Um, Utica explains that her look is based on her earrings and they were, and all the judges were like, oh, well now I get it, but I still hate it. Um, uh, I, I thought it, I stand by it. I think it was really cool, but um, I think it was cool too. It's just dangerous going there and having to ever explain something because you want it to be like, you want it to be so blatantly obvious that you get that gasp when you walk out of the runway, not when you're done explaining it. Um, but you know, uh, fortune favors the brave and, uh, Utica was brave and she did that. Uh, the winner of the challenge is Miss Olivia Lux Mm. and she gets $5,000. Yes, she does. Um, uh, the safe divas are Tina, Elliot, and Utica. And the bottom two are Tamisha and Candy. And since the theme is disco this week, the song is Hit 'em Up Style by Blue Kendra. 90s R&B, how wonderful. Um, <laughs> Whatever, what a fierce, perfect, it's, just, it's a perfect drag song. It really yeah. is. Um... <laughs> This this lip sync for me it um every drag queen knows this song every drag queen knows who's gonna be Soli who's gonna be Mia um, <laughs> dragging now, all the pictures in the clothes in the wagon now is Got Mick Soli or Mia and is Tina who's <laughs> Tina Got Mick is Mia because she has an M in her name and okay. Candy is Soli because Candy Soli okay great okay, yeah great. um but Tamisha. <laughs> Tamisha does the damn thing. She says, oops. Uh, yeah. And they, it, honestly, it could have been either one of them to me if I was standing behind them and I wasn't in the room. I know what they edited it. Um, but Candy definitely had a passion on her face. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad we get to see her a little bit more. I really think that we'll see Tamisha on All Stars because she said it's not the end. It's just until we meet again. Honey, I think that she is going to be ready with guns blazing when it's time for All Stars because this this season happened really soon after her like going through a serious physical recovery. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't know. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of, Miss of the Tamisha. mother of the house of Iman. Iman. Mm-hmm. Um. Untucked this week. Did you watch, doll? Girl, I always watch. This was a really nice because um, I even watched Save the Last Dance after Untucked. No, I'm just kidding. It, <laughs> I, I can't remember what the movie was. It's always like some kind of some kind of movie. Some I, kind I of even watched they... White Chicks afterwards after <laughs> Untucked. So stay tuned to our Patreon and we'll talk about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> um. This this message from Kate's parents was cool because, mm-hmm. um, you know, just seeing parents support someone who is like different. A lot of us don't have that privilege. Right. And uh, seeing them use his chosen name, that that was big for him. But um, I like that he like the whole time he's kind of like cringy about mom and dad being there and it's not the effect that they wanted, like the crying, the tears. He's like, oh, my God, my parents, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I totally feel that, too. When my mom comments on my Instagram sometime, I'm like, mom, shut up. Uh, I love like I mom comments on my stuff. Uh... Yeah, I love it. And all the time. But like, I'm like, mom, don't my let mom them know I'm a back. real person. Oh, I know. <laughs> Pamela will clap back too, so don't don't try your mom, it in the comments. Your mom will yell. Pamela will. You, your mom will yell down a hallway. That's a man, <laughs> and I only know that because she did it at me several times <laughs> in an evening in Cincinnati. Oh she, my god! She said, "That's a man." Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> she knows why. No. <laughs> wow. Um, Candy is really like you know. So she thinks distraught. she's going to be bottom. She thinks she's going to be bottom. She sees her dreams being dashed before her right now. I yeah. mean, she must have known this was coming with, you know, that that jumpsuit was kind of iffy for me in just the sense it was a jumpsuit with a belt. It was made up of two specific things, neither of them fabulous. Her hair was great, but we've already seen that hair on her. So, like, I understand why she's in the bottom in this challenge. Yeah. Um, and she probably does, too. Plus, we get that storyline of two girls that went head-to-head last episode. You know, right. 
Bah. And it's nice to see that they've sort of made amends. Like they're at least they're like joking. They're doing the drag queen thing where you have a really serious argument with someone, and then twenty minutes later you're making jokes referencing how ridiculous you both were being <laughs> yeah. in the fight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is lovely. Tamisha was like, "Well, I think you're arrogant." <laughs> and he's like, yes. <laughs> oh, I love well. drag. I love this show. It was an amazing lip sync. Um, and we thank you so much for joining us for Race Chasems this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm Willem, and I'm Alaska. And remember. We are nominated for a queer chief <laughs> for best podcast. Oh, I've been voting continuously this whole time. I've seen you on your phone this I whole know, time. <laughs> no, I already <laughs> voted today. You can vote at queerty.com slash queerties2021, and we'll also link it in our Instagram bio. Oh God, the deadline is coming up soon. <laughs> the 16th! Good. Okay, um, we would love for you to write a review of our podcast on your podcast app, and don't forget to subscribe and take a moment to leave us a good rating as well. You can follow the dolls at Willem at the only Alaska mm-hmm. 5000 and our race chaser account is at race chaser pod and the mom mm-hmm. podcast account is mom podcast where you can find all of the mom podcasts. And we have really fun bonus video available now on patreon.com slash Willem. Willem. You can search the race chaser content by searching the hashtag race chaser. chaser. Really fun stuff on there. Uh, you can see us turn into uh, Kamora Hall and Tin Min. Um, you can email us at racechaserpodcast at gmail.com with any That's tea right. or anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we ask that you wear a mask mm-hmm. and wash your hands mm-hmm. and socially distance yourself and respect each other out in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's for dinner? <laughs> Race Chaser. Race Chaser is not endorsed by World of Wonder, Viacom, or any of their subsidiaries. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. RuPaul's Drag Race and all names, pictures, audio, and video clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and or copyright holders. Forever Dog. Race Chaser with Alaskan Willem is a Forever Dog podcast. Produced by Big Dipper. Executive produced by Brett Poem, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Mixed and mastered by Will Pitts. Our theme song is Race Chaser by Alaska Thunderfuck. Oh.